What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's up, y'all? Back with another Larry Bird video. And I specifically look for this video. You know, players, NBA legends, whatnot, talking about how scary good Larry Bird was. Because I think talking to players that played with particular players that are a subject of conversation and players that competed against these players is really where you get the best feel for an accurate analysis and of a specific player and, and storytelling and they can tell you how it was to be on the court um, in the war zone whether they're you know behind the trenches with that guy or opposing them you really get a feeling and understanding of what that player was like how good that player was from his peers and people that he played against and I and I specifically looked for this video because I recently just put out a video where JJ Reddick completely disrespected Larry Bird and JJ Reddick is a ex NBA player but he never played in Larry Bird's era meanwhile you know, Dominique Wilkins had to check this man. And Mad Dog checked him too. Mad Dog's like, yo, I was there. I know what I saw. Dominique Wilkins had to check him. Dominique Wilkins played in that era. And he and he was speaking on Larry Bird. So I was like, you know what? Let's see what these other legends have to say about him. And if, and if you want to see that video, that video pissed me off with, with J.J. Reddick. I'm going to put the link to that video in the description of this video. So go check out my reaction and response to what JJ Reddick said, please. And I would love to hear your opinion. Let's get into this reaction. The man from Indiana who gave us an 80s to remember by lighting up a battle between the Celtics and the Lakers will forever be heralded as one of the players who saved basketball. Bird and Magic's coast-to-coast -coast war and jaw-dropping styles gave the NBA the boost it needed before the emergence of Michael Jordan. But for Bird, with three three titles, two finals MVPs, and three consecutive MVP seasons, some forget just how good he really was. Today we look at NBA players explaining how crazy good Larry Bird was in his prime. Before we get into all that, if you want to win a PS5 with NBA 2K22 and Madden NFL 22 included, leave a like, PS5. comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. PC and Nintendo Switch when here. speaking of the NBA's greatest of all time, there's always five or ten guys that hit the list. Each carries a different generation from 50s Bill Russell to 60s Wilt Chamberlain or 70s Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 80s Magic Johnson, 90s Michael Jordan, 2000s Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant, to today's LeBron James. Some get overlooked when they shouldn't, for example, Tim Duncan, and others get left behind because of the lack of titles like Charles Barkley. What happens when all these players talk of another great as if he was like no other? Larry Bird was lauded by most of these legends because he was one of them too. He was consistent, tough, offensively masterful, and one of the first big guys to shoot many three-point shots. LeBron James spoke candidly in an interview about how he was one of the few guys ever to win a three-point contest with a warm-up shirt on, LeBron referring to the time Larry won his third consecutive three-point contest. James continued, For young guys that don't know him, you know, they, they think of Larry Bird as a jump shooter, uh, but he was so much more than that. He was a passer. He averaged double-digit rebounds. Um, he definitely took charges. And, um, you know, he's a straight up complete basketball player and me as a small forward. Later in his career, LeBron adapted his game to the new way of basketball, which was a charge led by the Golden State Warriors in shooting more from behind the arc. LeBron was considered a big guy, but began shooting more threes and no doubt was heavily influenced by the fact that Larry Legend had already achieved this feat in the 80s. In another interview, when asked about his top three of all time, LeBron put Larry Bird firmly in there with MJ and Dr. J. Oh my God, three. Uh, yeah, Larry Bird, Dr. J. Michael. Shaq had a very different opinion on Larry initially. He said he disliked Bird because he was jealous. He thought, how could this regular looking guy do everything? <laughs> Never really had a chance to play against Larry Bird, but I, I actually used to hate Larry Bird. I, 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 I hated him. Shaq soon realized as he grew older and wiser that despite getting the luck of the Irish with the Celtics, Larry made his own luck when it came to shooting the ball. Shaq, at 7'1", of course, had a completely different style of game at the time. He was built to the max and used brute force to impose his will on the defense and rack up the points, blocks, and rebounds. 
Shaq was also faster than most give him credit for, particularly mm -hmm. in the early part of his career. Bird was notoriously slow, which was all the more testament to his skill set, but yes. his basketball IQ was just on a different planet. Mm -hmm. He once sank a shot from behind the backboard, which O'Neal chalked down to a fluke following a bet with his friend. Sam Vincent to Bird! And it goes oh! Jack never really got the chance to play against Larry Bird, which is unfortunate, because I don't think it would have taken him so long to recognize greatness. On the other hand, six-time NBA champion Kareem Abdul-Jabbar battled Bird on numerous occasions while mm. playing with the Showtime Lakers. Bird got the better of him in the 1984 finals, and took another two in a decade that was largely dominated by the purple and gold. Kareem spoke about how Larry might have been the best he had played against and said, How good was Michael Bird? Jordan? People, I don't think people, people, people look at him and think, yeah, oh, he's a white guy, he's, slow guy. Chubby white guy, he <laughs> wore us out, man. You know? Because he just, this was, this muscle here, the one between his ears, yeah. that was his best, you know, because he, he made the three-pointers and he had assists and rebounded, steals. He was always at the right place at the right time on the court. You know, one of the great players I, you know, I had the opportunity to play against. 11-time All-Star Charles Barkley, a regular season MVP during a star-filled 90s, was once asked, are you better than Bird? And he took a long pause before answering, which is very telling. Am I better than Bird? Oh man, that's a great question. Most great players respond immediately with how they think they're the best because you have to have that kind of mentality in order to get to the top. Instead, Barkley answered, I'm a better rebounder. I'm probably a better defender. He's a better shooter, obviously. You know, a, a lot of people talk about who's better. But you have to think, you have to have that mentality. No, no, you know, you know, you know. Uh, like, I, if, I think, you know, it's, it's a team game. I think deep down he knew that Bird was a better player, and for some, I was about, I was just pause. I'm pausing. It. I was about to say that I'm sure Chuck knows that he doesn't stand. I'm I'm not even talking accolades. I'm not even talking championships, MVPs. I'm talking accolades. Just player for player. No, Charles Barkley is not as good as Larry Bird. Point blank. Period. May he do a couple of things better than Bird? Sure, I'm sure he does, but he's not a better basketball player than Larry Bird. Chuck, I don't even know what you're thinking about, boy. Someone as good as Chuck to be stumped like that in an interview shows you how heavy the weight of Larry Bird's legacy was. Former teammate Kevin McHale also references how unreal Bird was to play with. McHale was Bird's right-hand man while playing with Boston, claiming the Sixth Man of the Year award twice, along with seven All-Star appearances. His story of a specific Detroit game is fascinating. There was a bit of time left on the clock, and we had beaten Detroit, and I just scored 56, and I'm walking off the court, and Larry said, where are you going? I said, I'm done. I said, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Larry goes, don't do it, man, because when I get that hot, I'm not coming out of the game. A week later, he got that hot. He looked at me at about 50 points, and he looked at me and said, I told you. The pair would go on to win three titles together, and McHale uh -huh. would continue to tell stories that live on in Celtics folklore forevermore. A highlight being a throwback from Bird's brutal trash talk at a game in Phoenix. We have a play, out of bounds play, I'm taking it out, and um, Larry says, I'm going to bust off the play, and I'm just going to come out, and I'm going to shoot a three, and I'm like, we're down two. I'm like, no, don't do that. I'm like, just, let's shoot a two, please. Go to the hole, try to get fouled. Let's just get into overtime, see if we can't win this game. And Larry says, no, nah, I'm just going to bust a three on him. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, my gosh. So he tells us, tells the Phoenix bench, um, <laughs> tells the coaches, yeah, I'm just fixing to bust a three on you guys and just go home. I'm tired of this. <laughs> and he gets the ball, jumps out, busts the play, comes out, gets the ball to slot, shoots the ball. As the ball's in the air, he kind of turns towards the Phoenix bench and yells, told you so. <laughs> Larry's mental game was such I that he could I, just I turn up any team and tear them apart. He would use psychological warfare on a regular basis. Players speak of his toughness not because of his size or physicality, but because of his mind. He would impose his will on the opposition and could force them off their game just as much as he could switch on his. A mastermind at trash talk tactics, Larry Bird will forever go down in history as one of the greatest trash talkers of all time. And in the 80s, that mattered. With players such as... Pause real quick. I just want to say, it's one thing Kobe used to always say. I go say used to always say, but I heard him say, he's like, you can play the game, but you have to be able to think the game also. Larry Bird was a master at thinking the game psychologically, 
getting in players' head, knowing high IQ, everything involved with that. Such as Bill Lambier, Hakeem Olajuwon, Magic Johnson, and the eventual emergence of Michael Jordan, Bird did what was necessary in order to gain that mental edge that took him over the top. Still one of my favorite passes James right Worthy, there. the 1988 Finals MVP, simply stated that Larry was trash-talking all the time, but the problem was he could back it up. Oh, yeah, he, he could back it up. So, uh, <laughs> when you're arrogant and you can back it up, you're not arrogant, you're just good. And, uh, and Larry was good. Even Warther's former teammate Magic Johnson spoke on the fact that he had a real dislike for Larry Bird as far back as their college playing days for the very reason that Larry would constantly get the better of him. Johnson claimed in a recent interview during a press build-up for the Broadway play about the pair that after he beat Larry in the NCAA championship game in 1979, the most watched college basketball game ever, by the time he got to the Lakers they were 0-8 and to the Celtics. You had to hate the Celtics to beat them because bef when I got here we were 0 for I think 8 and then the first time against the Celtics in the in championship series and then we lost that in 84 that made us 0 for 9 I believe and later is quoted as saying when I played Larry Bird was the only one I feared mm. not bad when hearing it from a five-time champion and one of the true great basketball players of all time at the 2019 NBA Awards, Johnson received the NBA Lifetime Achievement Award, but it was shared with, guess who, Larry Bird. Bird was simply the king of talking the talk, then actually going out and walking the walk. Listen, man, retirement is great for you because you've never talked this long. <laughs> Dominique Wilkins recounts one of the most famous games where Larry Bird promised Kevin McHale he was going to break McHale's record against Atlanta. Wilkins said, You got <laughs> so hot in that game that you talk about that patented step back. He was doing that step back and he switched it to his left hand three separate times in that game. He hit a three. He was scoring anywhere on the floor Ooh, that he wanted. Is this when the I bitch mean, was, was giving each other five? The <laughs> bitch was giving each other five. So did you get in a fight with them after the game? Forget, I, forget Larry. Did well, you beat anybody on the bench? Because way you're giving five, he's scoring on me. Yes. Every one of those you're guys on my team. got fined 3,000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Larry's legend lives on because of the greats that want to tell them. The reason there's a list of top 10 players who consistently call Bird their toughest opponent or one of their all-time greats is because Larry himself is in that list. Larry is a top 10 baller of all time. His style doesn't matter when his skill sinks the opposition. Because above all, the opposition will remember. They'll remember the steals, the that shots, move. the clutch plays, and the trash talk. They'll remember the Bird from the early 80s, not from the early 90s. The Larry who stepped out on the court in his warm-up jacket and made Michael Jordan recoil in envy. MJ announced, he ain't took off his top yet. Oh, yeah. I see what he took off his top. Well, when Bird did, mm. it was all business. Mm. He may as well have taken a mop and bucket to the floor because he was about to clean up. He was an impetuous and never relenting opponent that took the life from anyone who stepped onto his battlefield. The consensus is a resounding stamp of legendary status for the man who will forever go down in the history books as one of the greatest ever players, and arguably the greatest ever Celtic to grace the court. What did you think of Larry Bird and his play? Arguably. Arguably the greatest Celtic to ever bless the court? Bro. Me personally, respect to the other great Celtics players in the history of that franchise, but I, I would have to say Larry Bird is the definitive greatest Celtic of all time. I, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't put anybody over Bird. I, I can't, I, I can't. Nope, 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 nope. No, sorry, I can't. That's not even a, that's not even a debate to me. I can't even have that debate. I can't. With all due respect, they had some great, 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 great Celtics players in the history of that franchise, but nobody was greater than Larry Legend. That's that bird call. Yo, it's it's I I wanted to do that, man, because like I said, you gotta hear other players really talk about it. The players players that witness these guys, play with these guys, play against these guys, I like them, man, because you get the best context there and they don't care about numbers. Oh, screw the numbers, screw the analytics. I'm gonna put all this in the context. I'm gonna tell you what it was like on that court. I'm gonna tell you who the best was on the court at that time. I'm going to tell you who one of the greatest players was of all time. That's right. You know, you hear a lot, you know, you have these analytic peoples that are all about numbers. They'll look at LeBron, like LeBron versus Kobe, for example, and they'll be like, oh, well, LeBron has most of the numbers, so yeah, he's better than Kobe. But you'll get a lot of pushback from players that played with LeBron, with Kobe, whether on 
opposite teams or whatever, they'll and a lot of players will be like, nah, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe was that guy. Kobe was that guy. And you wouldn't understand until you get on the court because all you care about is numbers. I'm not trying to spark a debate here, but I'm just using that as an example. Anywho, as, and as great as Larry Bird's numbers are, as great as they are, they still, the numbers alone, don't do this player justice, man. You have to see Larry Bird play. You have to hear the testimony from these players, from people that were up close and personal to the situation. That is where you're going to get the best information. That is where you're going to get the best value. My personal opinion. But let me know what you think about it. I would love to hear your opinion as well. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Stay notified. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Drop them comments. I respond to all of them. All right. Peace out. Much love. Be safe. And we out, baby.